Okay, sorry, I had a little glitch with the old video recorder here. So uh, we're back basically, I hope, where we left off. We had imported the both the drone and the LiDAR point clouds. We're looking at the ortho mosaic. And so now we have our base data in. And remember, we set up our location, grass location. We just had the permanent map set. And the sort of best practices with grass is to put your base data in permanent and then create a new map set to do any potentially destructive work or additional work with that. So you're not working in permanent, you're just importing your base data and then we should go create a new map set. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could potentially uh, do it from one of these modules over here um, by creating a new map set. We could also just close grass, start it again and create a new map set. But since we're here right now, let's just do it right here. And I'm going to call this uh, point cloud processing. That's going to be the name of my map set. Click OK. And it gives you this little message. And we've technically changed map sets. So it's a little bit, you know, if you're not really f following along with what you're doing, you might get confused, which is why I, I still like the ritual of closing grass and starting it again and creating my map sets that way. But now I just want to let you know, we are definitely in that new map set. Um, if you want, you can even just close the display uh, and then start a new display by um, new map display window, like so. And so now we can see that we actually are in the point cloud processing um, map set. Let me just make this guy a little bigger for y'all. Okay, so new map set. We have no maps in it. All our maps are in permanent at this point. What we want to do, I'm just going to quickly re-add in our mosaic just because um, I have photo mosaic just because it gives us a nice something to look at while we're talking about the next little bit here. And blue. Okay, so that's essentially what we were looking at before. Now we could process we're actually at the point right now where we need to process the point clouds both of them to remove the tree so if I was to lay in the point points here the lidar would be kind of and we were to zoom in we would see kind of like transects where the laser was shining and the drone point clouds more densely packed right in and around there um, I, if I was to do the whole point cloud especially for the lidar point cloud on my laptop we'd be here for several hours. So I'm, I'm going to suggest for those of you students following along at home doing this on your laptops, yeah, we're going to zoom in and just work in a little area. And this little upper area around these houses is kind of nice. There's a slope here and then there's some trees. So it gives us a nice little area to focus on. And it's not a bad idea when you're working with any kind of LiDAR data to zoom in at first and work in a small area that's representative of the topography and, and vegetation cover until you find the parameters that seem to filter the point cloud best and then you can zoom back out to the whole point cloud set it to those parameters set the routine to those parameters and then you can run it and walk away and trust that it will finish it and create a good uh, filtered point cloud afterwards so what we can do it's pretty straightforward to clip our what we're going to do is clip our point clouds out to just this little area over here so I'm just going to zoom in, just going to use my little zoom tool here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I got a little bit of the wash. I got some of the houses. I got some of the trees. I feel pretty good about this. I might just push it over so I get the entire corner of the house. Let's get all of those houses. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me like that. Okay, it's not super important. And uh, our display is set here. And what we want to do is to set the computational uh, region from the extent of display. And so there we go. We're now set our region to match the area that we're zoomed in, just the boundaries. And we can clip by going to vector and then uh, basically down here where it says v, uh, overlay vector maps, clip vector maps, v.clip. And um, we should be able to clip by the region. Now usually what I do is I make a just a little polygon based on the region and if this doesn't work 
this way, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> so let's just see what happens if I select that twice and clipped. Now, hopefully, I believe by by doing clip by a region, it should should actually clip it. Yeah, 9,000. That's pretty good. Uh, just FYI, if you do this uh, V clip and it gives you an error and says the topology is not built, then uh, you're going to need to rebuild the topology for your original drone or LiDAR point clouds or both of them. And you do that by the vector menu, topology maintenance, create or rebuild topology, V dot build. And then you would pick like your, you'd have to be back in permanent directory to do this. So you'd have to go back into the permanent directory, select drone point cloud, and hit run, build the topology. Don't display it, and it will just run through it. It might take a couple of minutes because there's, what, 2 million in, in the LiDAR point cloud and almost a million in the drone point cloud. And it will just map out the topology, and then it will let you clip them. So if it doesn't give you, if it gives you an error, that's what you have to do. Um, I actually rebuilt the topology on my points while the video was glitched out because I knew this was going to be a problem. Um, so sorry for doing that off camera. I should have done that. I should have waited till the video was running. So we've just clipped the uh, drone so we can see the drone points here and there's only 9,000 of those points. Let's now clip the LiDAR points and we'll just do this. I'm going to name this. LiDAR point cloud clipped, and we'll hit run, and look, there's only 10,000 of those. So we've clipped them out. Let's take a look at these two uh, differences between them now that we're zoomed in. You see the drone point cloud was sort of bunched. The trees are kind of missing a little bit, so the drone has already tried to, uh, you know, WebODM has tried to process out the trees a little bit, which is pretty good, but there's still some on the roofs and in the trees around here. Uh, so let's uncheck the drone point cloud. And here's the LiDAR one. You can see, yeah, it looks more like transects. And it definitely goes across some of those trees. So we're certainly going to want to process both of these guys out. So uh, there's a variety of ways of actually processing or filtering out um, vegetation. If you have the return data, which is the actual reflectance, is it the first return, second, third return, you know, you can use that to help filter out the trees, and that is probably the most advanced way of doing it. You would need to have compiled grass with uh, LiDAR support, LAS support, and you would do that while uh, importing in um, uh, import raster, I believe. Yeah, RN LiDAR, or I think there's also a VN LiDAR, and you would filter based on the returns um, at that particular, with that particular tool. But my version of Grass wasn't compiled with that. M I think most of the binaries you download from the Grass website don't have that. You have to know how to compile it on your own from source because of the LAS source tools have to be compiled as well, which is a bit of an annoyance, but we can work around that. Um, there is, uh, if you wanted to go, the easiest way to create a DEM with point clouds is under import raster data uh, R in XYZ, and then you essentially just pick a resolution and then tell, so let's say, average the elevation within that. But it's not particularly robust in terms of removing things like vegetation. So that's why we did V in XYZ, and we're filtering it this way. There are some uh, tools under vector LIDAR analysis these three detect edges detect interiors and then correct and reclassify you run them in sequence with your input point cloud here and then the output of this goes into here the output of that goes into here and you might have to run that two or three times to fully filter it out and then you could filter out the vegetation that way but luckily for us there is an easier way and that is an extension called uh, v.lidar.mcc so to install an extension you go to Settings, Add-ons, Extensions, and then Install Extensions from Add-ons, G.Extension. And then you can just scroll down through 
in this case to the vector uh, area of vector add-ons and keep scrolling down until you see, whoops, I passed it. Uh, there it was, where was it? There, VLiDAR MCC and click install. Now I already previously installed this. Um, so I can find it under my modules tab under the add-ons. It won't appear here for you until you restart grass one more time. So if you want it to be here, you can do it and uh, you know restart grass and then it'll be here. And you could double click and we'll start. The other way to do it, even if it doesn't show up here, if you after you've installed it, you can go to the console and type v.lidar.mcc and then hit enter. You might have to enter twice just to make it read it and it pops up vlidarmcc. So before we run vlidarmcc, what we need to do is to set our region resolution essentially to match our desired output resolution for our uh, final uh, digital terrain model that we want to make. And for these um, uh, data that we have here, um, you can see the drone point cloud has uh, reasonably dense points, but it's patchy. It's missing some big holes. Whereas the LiDAR data is much more evenly covered, but the points aren't quite as close together. And if we're to go up here and draw, just measure the distance between one row and the next, it's telling me it's like 1.3 meters, you know, from between rows of the LiDAR data. And if we were looking at the sort of big patches that are missing in the drone point clouds, waiting for it to load back up. Oops, we're missing. What do I have to do? Always mess around with this stuff. Okay. Display the points for me, please. <laughs> okay. It's something like some of these things are like 12 or 15 meters. Okay. Uh, use my tool to clear it. And so we're, we have to pick a resolution that's um, reasonable. Even though we have some really dense points, remember we're going to filter out the vegetation so our points are only going to get less dense and our holes are only going to get sort of bigger in these, in these point clouds. And so we need to pick a reasonable resolution uh, to do this at. And probably with these data, uh, you know, and to make our lives easier, we'll just try and do about a meter. One meter pixel size is going to be our output desired map. Um, potentially, we could make a, a higher resolution one, but again, we're doing this going to do this through interpolation, and we don't want to start interpolating to the point where we're we're sort of making up data. So a meter, maybe two meters, depending, is a reasonable resolution. Let's go to our settings menu, computational region, set region, and just so we can see where we're at right now, if we hit uh, go to the print tab and hit print current region, the ortho mosaic that we set our region to match is like three centimeter resolution, which is super high resolution because the ortho photo can resolve that. But if we tried to run uh, V LiDAR MCC and then to interpolate a map, even in our zoomed in area at three centimeter resolution, it's gonna take a long time on my laptop. So we definitely need to uh, increase the resolution to one meter. So go to the resolution tab, 2D grid resolution, one, pretty straightforward, hit run. We haven't changed the boundaries of our box, so our boundaries are the same and our resolution is now one. At this point, we can close G region, we can bring back up our uh, VLiDAR MCC and get going. So let's start with the uh, uh, actual LiDAR point cloud, clipped, that one right there. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna look at the point cloud in 3D and it's gonna have the canopy and the ground down below. And then it's going to create, a, a, it's going to interpolate a really stiff surface, 3D surface, somewhere in the middle of that, like the average of that. And then it's going to run through at a couple of different resolution scales using this V outlier tool, uh, V LiDAR outlier tool, to pick out any points that are above this medium surface and say, those are definitely trees, let's delete them and separate out two sets of points. Uh, points that are probably the ground and points that are probably the trees. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to put LiDAR, GRND, PTS, ground points, and then LiDAR, TRS, PTS, trees points, right? That's just 
shorthand. I like to do it. You can name them whenever you want. This helps me keep it organized. Um, over here we have a few uh, parameters that uh, that could be tweaked. The tension parameter is, would tweak how stiff the, uh, the, the, the theoretical mid surface that it's going to use to determine what are trees and what aren't would be. Um, so you can change that. Same thing with the spline steps will make it smoother and flatter if you increase the spline steps. And then you could change some of these things, but these two are the ones apparently that are that are the most sensitive. Scale domains are the number of different different resolutions it's going to run. By default with three, it'll run it once at a slightly finer resolution, once at the resolution you set, one meter in this case, and once at a slightly coarser resolution. And I believe it uh, would, in this case, do something like 0.5 meters, 1 meter, and 1.5 meters. Um, and if you increase this, you can potentially filter out at, a, at you know, a little bit more um, in a more detailed way. But three is usually fine. And the rest of these are uh, a little less important. You might have to get into them. And I would certainly suggest you to read the manual for this for this guy. Um, it's actually pretty pretty straightforward when you read it, and it's got some nice displays in here. But at the beginning, at this point, we're just going to leave all the defaults. The defaults are reasonable, and we'll just see what it looks like. So we might have to run this one uh, this one module a couple of times, but we're going to have to first then look at our point cloud, or at least look at the you know render a uh, you know a surface and look at that in 3D, see if it looks good. And then we'll might have to repeat this. So I'm just going to hit um, run at this point. And because we zoomed way in and we set our region, our resolution pretty, you know, at one meter, this guy went fast. If we were doing the whole area, it would be a little bit longer. Looks like I zoomed in maybe more than I had to, <laughs> but that's okay. Because again, this is iterative and we want to find the right uh, settings to create the best map. And it's much more uh, useful to do this in a fast little area and then expand again if we need to. So we did this. Let's take a look at what our results would be. Um, I'm going to just clear that out because it's, it's a little frenetic over there. Okay. So VLIDAR MCC, and then now we need to interpolate our ground points into a raster map. So we've set our resolution to one meter. All we have to do at this point is go to our raster menu, go down to where it says interpolate surfaces, and we're going to use our vSurf vSpline from way back when we talked about interpolation. And I like to just sort of have these two guys up side by side because, again, you might have to go back and forth between them. So I don't close... I'm, I'm not going to close the LiDAR MCC until I'm certain that I got everything correct, right? So over here, the name of the input vector map, it's going to be uh, LiDAR ground points. So my phone is over here. It's It's got the, I don't know, it thinks I'm asking it, Google to do something. Super annoying. Okay, so uh, LiDAR ground points. And then our settings over here the spline step we're going to want to figure out the spline step and then the smoothing so the simplest thing to do is to go to the optional tab and check this box that says estimate point density and distance and you hit it runs uh oops error number okay i have to put in some uh required names here the output tabs so we're going to put uh, LiDAR DTM and uh, whoops I'm going to put it in the output raster map okay so then now we have this checked and we hit run it says mean distance between points is about a meter and 0.95 centimeters right so what we want what we want to do is we can uncheck that at this point go back to settings and the spline step uh, minimum should be about 1.5 times the that average distance. So at a minimum, we should be putting 1.5 here. If we increase this, if we make this number bigger than that, it's going to smooth out or, or kind of stiffen up the surface a little bit. So we might need to do that. But at the beginning, we're just going to start with 
that. We're going to choose a bicubic style of interpolation. And then we're going to leave the smoothing parameter pretty low. If we wanted, if it looks a little bumpy, we can make this uh, larger. We would make it to be just 0.1. But let's take a look at what this looks like uh, when we do this. So it should render pretty quickly because we're a pretty small area. Okay, so this is our map here. And let's uh, make sure it's the only one checked because we're going to pop into the 3D view and have a look at it. Okay, so let's go to the data tab, make sure our find mode is set to one so that we're seeing everything. And under the view tab, let's pull it around so that we can get a nice view of the area that we're interested in and let's increase the z exaggeration to two yeah that's really showing me that the trees aren't fully gone in this so we can try we can try to work just inside um, vsurf bspline by smoothing it a little bit with these settings so we could take this up to three and we can change this we'll just go all the way down to one and then on the optional tab we're going to overwrite those files and hit run and this may work you know it may be enough just to use these tricks of interpolation but we may need to be filtering out our trees more so now that we've done that we're gonna just refresh our display and pop into the 3d view mode and let's take a look so it looks like we have smoothed it out but you see you know i think we may have been a little heavy-handed on our interpolation i think we can try one more time with interpolations back to 2d mode um and this time i'm gonna i'm gonna leave my smoothing to the original 0.01 and we'll just let that do its thing like to refresh the display and then go into 3d view yeah so i think we we're being a little heavy-handed with the smoothing so the trees are still there uh you can see them popping out there a little bit so that tells me we need to go back to v lidar mcc and tweak our parameters a little bit so let's go back to our 2d view mode uh we'll bring up our v lidar mcc We'll go here and probably, let me just open the manual and see what it tells us to do in this case. It's always good to double check that you're doing things the right way. Okay, so optimal settings are, it says trial and error, uh, usually required. Spline steps have the and threshold T, curvance, ah, ter, uh, yeah, spline steps and curvature tolerance. T parameters have the most influence on the results. Larger spline split steps and lower curvature uh, tolerance threshold lead to more points classified as non-ground points. So that's the one that we want to tweak. So um, let's go up to 15 and T. It says, what should we do with T? Lower curvature tolerance. So let's just take this down by 0.1, make it 0.2. And uh, let's overwrite and hit run. OK. So at this point, we got to go back to our uh, vSurf vSpline. And we can leave our settings the same and just hit run again because it's got the new input. Uh, we just remember we overwrote this ground points so we're going to render a brand new uh, map this time and we're back over here and we can pop into 3d view and it looks like we're doing a little bit better here but we still have some of these trees so let's go again this is an iterative process so where did my did i close it silly what a silly thing to do Okay, so I believe I closed. There's Beast Blind. Too many windows. Yeah, it looks like I. No, here it is. Haha. 
There it is. It's just large. I was looking for something small. Okay. So let's go back to our optional tab and uh, let's try making these way bigger and this uh, tolerance a lot smaller. And it's already got the overwrite tab checked. So let's hit run. As soon as that's done, we can just hit run over here because everything's set up. And let's take a look. So we're doing better, I think. It's still a little lumpy. We could continue doing this. I'm not going to take up your time until I get it perfectly right. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is go back into here and I am going to increase my smoothing by a little bit. And while that's happening, I can go back and forth. And by that time, it should. Yeah, so that's reasonable. You can continue playing with this until you get it exactly the way you want. So we've done that now for our, this is our LiDAR point. Let's do it for our um, drone point cloud points. And for VLiDAR MCC, I am going to, uh, I'm just going to set everything back to the way it was, like so. Under the required tab, I'm going to find my drone point cloud clipped. And then I'm going to change this to drone ground points and this to drone trees points. I'm going to run. So it's going to take a little longer because there's actually more points in the drone point cloud in this little area. And here's our vSurf B spot line. I'm just going to pick now my drone ground points. I'm actually going to leave everything else exactly the same. It seems reasonable to me and speed things up just a little bit. And we're going to hit run. And then now we see our, we should be seeing our new drone DTO. Oh, look at that. I accidentally forgot to change the output. Let's quickly go back here to our LiDAR ground points <laughs> because this is the danger right here. The optional overwrite tab was checked and I forgot to change the output file name so I actually overwrote it. So LiDAR ground points, we just restored that file. Now let's pick our uh, drone ground points, go to our output, change that to drone DTM, lowercase. Now I'm going to hit run over here. Okay. And here we go. Drone point cloud was added. And I'm going to put my LiDAR back there. Okay. So making sure just drone cloud is checked, we can uh, go into the 3D view and just take a look at our work here. And again, we have to go to the data tab first and make sure that the find mode resolution is set to 1. And under the view, we can see we have a lot of trees in that drone point cloud data still in there. So we're going to need to really filter this guy a little heavily uh, in LiDAR MCC, more so than the actual LiDAR data. So bring our two modules back up, our B spline and our V LiDAR MCC. Go to our optional tab. Let's really increase our spline steps to like 30 and our curvature tolerance. Let's bring it way down to like 0.05 and see what that does for us. Let's see, definitely by doing that, we're taking a little longer, right? Okay, so now we're just going to hit run again without tweaking our interpolation settings because we want to check it out. Oh, we may have gone way too far. <laughs> we may have gone way too far. We're going to get just like a, we filtered out all the points. Yeah, okay. Let's go back to our, uh, whoops, our 
V LiDAR MCC. We'll take that back down to a more reasonable step. Just the same ones we used when, for our actual LiDAR data too. So let's hit run over here. Well, that's to get my beast line up again as soon as it's done. Okay, now we can run. Hopefully it won't look all yellow. Ah, maybe we, we have been way too aggressive over here. Uh, so let's take this down. Well, let's keep this high and we'll put this curvature back up to like three and we'll see what happens when we do that. Again, this is trial and error. There are no, obviously, clearly there are no single set of parameters that work in every situation. So this is why it's important to do it in this sort of back and forth way, checking your work, working in a little area until you get some numbers that work. Okay, so it looks like we were, we're, we're got a better result here in the background. Let's pop again into the 3D view. And yeah, it's looking, looking like the trees are still kind of influencing yeah, the trees are definitely still influencing us over here, uh, which is a little unfortunate. So let's see. Let's see what we can do. Keep going. I'm going to try one more time before I give up. <laughs> okay, so let's just let's make a really stiff one. Maybe I'll try two more times. Uh, I'll try this with 30 like we started with leaving clearly the threshold value was very sensitive in this particular case. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. And then I'm gonna pop back and forth between 2D and 3D so that we can reload the new 3D topography. And yeah, those trees are still in there. With this drone point cloud, the trees are a killer. So let's try reducing this to two, leaving that at 30 and see what happens. It may not, it may not work, but we're gonna give it a try. All right. So you can see if you're doing this on the entire area it would take a long time okay it may not it may not have worked yeah we went too far it's that it's this guy right here clearly is a uh, minimum number that you can use so i'm just going to try one more time with a real stiff plate and then I'm going to try with the smoothing parameter in vSurf vSpline. That's going to be the last time I mess with this. And it may just be drone, drone point cloud in this particular case because of the orchard. It's really the regular space trees is really not going to do it for us. So let's um, see what that looks like. And if I have to, I'll increase the smoothing. And then we'll move on with the rest of the tutorial because there's still stuff to do. Okay. One more time with the smoothing, just be spline, optional tab, settings tab, sorry. And we're gonna up this to pretty high smoothing. I can see that it's still gonna be lumpy down there. Let's try, let's just keep going. Let's push this. Let's push this really far. We're gonna have to mess with our Interpolation settings. I may have pushed it way too far. Yeah, it's looking like nothing up there. It's really smoothing it out in the upper regions. But okay, we'll just go with this as our, um, you know, as our basic result. So what I, we want to do now is we want to compare our two uh, DTMs. And... Uh, you can kind of look at the colors 
but it's useful. Let's just create some hill shades and we can look at them side by side. So terrain analysis under the raster menu, and then we want the compute shaded relief R relief. And we're gonna start, I guess we have the drone one selected. So drone, DTM, shade. Uh, I le usually leave these alone, but let's set the zigzag for two just so we can get more shadow going on. We'll just hit run and then it does it. And then we'll do the same thing for the LiDAR uh, DTM. We'll hit run. Okay. So with these two maps uh, selected, what we can do is use a little tool called the map swipe. Under the file menu, you go down to the low, almost the bottom, map swipe, g.gui map swipe. And if you have those two selected, it automatically selects them, but you can uh, use the add maps to select them in, the, in a little menu over here if you'd like as well. And what this does, I'll just expand it, is uh, essentially lets you swipe across. So both maps are in there, both are registered, and you have the drone one in this case on the right and the LiDAR one on the left. And so you can do this to quickly see the differences between them on, in this particular case, the shaded relief, but any kind of map, you can do this as well. Um, so that's really cool. We can definitely see the LiDAR one is looking better, a lot better uh, than the drone one for a variety of reasons, but mostly because of its e nice and even coverage and the fact that the lasers can penetrate through the foliage better than the drone, well, drone can't penetrate through the foliage. Okay, cool. So that gives us uh, our first little area. We can interpolate or interpret visually what these shadows mean. We could lay the colors on, we could do slope, but let's just quickly classify this based on landform type. And uh, we'll go back to terrain analysis. We could use our param scale, but we can use our geomorphon. Why not? It's a nice new one. Let's pick our LiDAR uh, DTM and we'll leave everything basically by default. Uh, we The only thing we want is our uh, pattern output. Um, so we'll put LiDAR geomorph and I think we can basically leave that alone for now. This is a very sophisticated tool but we don't have time to get into it right now. So we're just going to run that and um, this is now classified ridge, peak, valley, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's While we do this, while we have it open, let's do it for our drone one as well. Drone DTM, and the patterns will be drone geomorph and we can see they're going to be totally different patterns. Um, you can throw up the raster legend. Doesn't matter which one you choose. It's just going to give you a little label so you know what you're looking at for the colors. Um, and what you can do is uh, sort of go back and forth between them this old way. Or why not? Let's pull up the map swipe again. Oops, I had the two wrong ones selected. Okay, we'll just do it this way. Drone, geomorph, and LiDAR geomorph. Okay, so there we go. And now we can, um, well, we could swipe back and forth between them. I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't want to zoom in all the way, but, um, you know, is what it is. If we do this, I might just have to use the zoom tools to do that. Oh, that just zooms in on my little area. Anyway, fun, fun, fun with the map swipe. It's kind of a cool tool to s sort of compare maps quickly back and forth. But clearly, we can see there's a difference between the two renderings. So the last thing that I'm going to have you all do is uh, it's a real basic difference map in the map calculator. And so here we can go to the raster map calculator and we just 
insert um, let's start with our lidar DTM and we're gonna put a minus sign and we'll put our drone DTM like so and we'll call this diff lidar drone so we know that it was lidar minus drone and just hit run so over here in our layers let's just unselect all the rest of them we have diff lidar drone let's go right click on it set color table define the color table and find the one that says differences and so zero will be white negative will be blue and positive will be red I believe yeah so it looks like basically they're not even the same the probably what's happening is the actual elevation values are uh, different between them so we can figure that out if we uh, select the actual DTMs both of them like so and get our query tool and click around put this up here and so you can see the value for the drone point cloud is 56 above sea level whereas for the lidar it's 137 and it looks like it's a pretty standard offset oh interesting so we can correct for that uh, so let's take a look at our uh, differences map over here the one that we just created and uh, let's take a look at its histogram so let me blow this up it looks like there's a smattering of them between yeah between about 80 and 84 uh, meters difference but the vast majority of them are it looks like 81.75 more or less so that's the value we can just add that let's see what happens uh, let's go back into our oh we closed our map calculator didn't we so let's get our map calculator up let's take our uh, LIDAR, not our LIDAR, our drone DTM and we will add uh, what did I say? 87, 80, 81.75 is what I said and what we're going to do is call this drone DTM corrected so that's just that and while we're in here let's delete all this stuff add our uh, let's do our difference again lidar DTM minus our drone DTM corrected and diff lidar drone corrected okay so we have here our diff lidar drone collected and by default it's this British color scheme so let's change it back to our diff color scheme so we can see what's going on set color table define differences color scheme hit run and there we go and since we already have one of these guys you know raster legend um, already displayed I'm just going to double click on it and change it to match our diff loan light our drone corrected and so now we can see the differences related to our um, our interpolation and it looks about three meters difference between the lidar and the drone in these areas and versus two meters down in those areas so why don't we take a look at this a slightly different way let's um, let's add in a shader relief map layer we'll pick our lidar DTM shade and then we'll drape this diff map over it just so we can kind of get a sense for the topography 
And it looks like it's just sort of about the density of the points. Um, if we show our drone point cloud, it's going to take a little bit of time here. Um, of course, we have to put that underneath it. Uh, it looks like over here, there's just too many big gaps. And there's a big gap down here in the drone point cloud. And that is causing, that's causing a lot of error in our final uh, map. It has to do with the way the drone point cloud is generated and the fact that it's spottier. And so in this particular area, the drone photogrammetry technique, if we're trying to get rid of the trees, is not going to produce as accurate of a DTM surface of the ground surface as LiDAR. And that will be the case if you have trees or, or, or thick vegetation anywhere. If you're out in the desert or something and the drone can the drone camera can see the ground surface, then potentially the drone photogrammetry technique can produce results that rival LiDAR. So at this point, what you would do is you'd choose your data set, you'd figure out which values work in V LiDAR, MCC, and VSurf B spline. You'd zoom back out to the whole area that you want to interpolate, and then you'd hit go, and then you'd go have coffee, tea, lunch, maybe also lunch and dinner and breakfast the next day, and then come back and finish the routine with the interpolation and go have more lunch and more dinner the next day, and then it would be rendered one meter resolution DEM. Now, I'm being a little facetious about how long that might take, but it could take quite a while. So, you know, get a better computer or have a lot of patience. So that's basically it for this. I know this is kind of a monster tutorial. I'm, I'm going to break it apart into two sections. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it will, um, it will make some sense when you run through it yourself. All righty. And this is the last one for the semester, so whew, pat yourself on the back. Yay. Okay, that'll do. I will see you guys in class one more time next Tuesday.